This week on Sport Fishing, we're heading south to the East Cape region of Baja, Mexico. And we'll be staying at the beautiful Palmas de Cortez Resort. Over the years, we've taped several exciting episodes of Sport Fishing here at Palmas de Cortez. Well, we know that we got another great one in store for you this week. We'll be fishing out of Palmas Fleet, and we'll be looking for marlin, both stripes and blues. So make sure you stay tuned to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. stories. Welcome back. Well as you know for most of our trips here on sport fishing we just head out of one of Southern California's many sport fishing landings. But for today's show we'll be flying aboard Aero California down to Southern Baja and from there we'll take a taxi to our resort. Aero California offers convenient flights to both La Paz and Los Cabos airports. And since the East Cape region is located between these two cities, you'll never have a problem catching a flight out of Aero California. Everybody with Aero California was extremely friendly to us, making our trip very enjoyable. It took us about an hour and a half to fly from Los Angeles down to La Paz. From La Paz, it'll be about an hour and 15 minutes by taxi to get to the East Cape. Now for those of you that have time, you might want to spend a day or two right here in La Paz. It's the capital of Baja and it's a large and beautiful city to visit. Well thanks to Aero California, we arrive safely in La Paz and as soon as I pass customs, they'll be off to the East Cape. After checking into our rooms and putting all our gear away, all that was left was to go to the dining room and have a nice enjoyable dinner. It was fun talking to all the other anglers to hear what they caught and to hear all those great fish stories. One of the things that I appreciate most out of fishing the East Cape is that you don't have any long taxi ride to get to the boat. Unlike Cabo, here at the East Cape, all you have to do is wake up right in front of your hotel, walk down to the beach, and from there they'll take you by small ponga out to the cruisers. Now if you're going to fish on a super ponga, you'll just board right here and head out fishing. But like most sport boats, well, after getting on the boat, our first stop of the day was at the bait receiver. Here 
here at the East Cape, bait usually isn't a problem. As a rule, you can always buy it from these bait fishermen, and the prices are fairly reasonable. We just dropped back a live bait. We had sailfish come up right behind the boat. And he didn't hit the lures or anything, but he was right in the area. So they turned on him real quick and circled. We've only been fishing for about 10 minutes. And what we're doing right now is we have a couple of rods out, actually three lines out, with trolling feathers for the bigger marlins and stuff. We do have one small feather for Dorado or sailfish. But the skipper up above the deck down spotted a sailfish off to the side, so they circled on it, and we dropped this uh, live bait behind there. And what we're trying to do is just try to attract the fish back toward the boat. We might have spooked it when we turned over. Right now, just to let you know where we are, that we've only been fishing for about 10 minutes. We're about 40 minutes uh, south of the hotel, out of Palmas. So don't see that sail So we're gonna just slow, slow troll this live bait by them bit longer and if nothing pops up there in the next minute or two we'll wind it back in put the live bait back in the well and then uh, keep on trolling hopefully find another sailfish or marlin or something the fishing's been pretty good the guys we talked to that fish yesterday a few sailfish a few marlin even one uh, moon marlin is a big tree just out of here it seemed like a lot of small grotto see what happens here come on fish come on back while we head out to the fishing grounds, why don't we take a minute and visit Palmas de Cortez. Located in the East Cape region of Baja, Mexico, Palmas de Cortez provides a beautiful retreat at any time of the year. Quiet and secluded, this resort has maintained its sense of exclusivity since the day it opened many years ago. From rustic bungalows with thatch roofs to multi-room suites, Palmas de Cortez will suit many tastes. Meals are included with your room, and you can count on one of the Van Warmer family, owners of the resort, having participated in the preparation of the meal. Bob, Chacha, and their sons run the resort and are there to ensure that your stay is the best it can be. As a fishing resort, Palmas is nearly unequaled. A large fleet of quality cruisers and super pongas are manned by some of the most knowledgeable crews this area of Mexico has available. A fishing trip to Palmas, this might bring the catch of a lifetime. As a beachside hideaway, it's nearly impossible to find a quieter, more secluded retreat. No telephones, televisions, or program activities to interrupt your blissful relaxation. Just do as you please. Lie in the sun, swim in the pool, order a drink from the bar, or enjoy the miles of white sandy beaches that stretch in either direction from the resort. Palmas de Cortez is a perfect place to rekindle the romance in your life. set up right now is we have the International with 80 pound test line controlling the large super, the 5.5s with the blue marlin, the large drivers. We have another super lure here, 3.5, going for the smaller striped marlin. And then on the outside we have a, uh, another larger super looking for the big marlin. And on this saber stick here we're going to be throwing live bait, dropping them back on the marlin, hopefully marlin sail we also have some other rods that we're holding. If we get lucky and find a bunch of sailfish, we might try fishing them for 
real light line. We got some of those rigs lined up too. And we have all our live bait right in here. Okay, everything's nice and easy to get to. We got flying fish all around us, so we know we're in a fishy area. All we need to do is find the, the right bill fish that wants to eat. We had that one sailfish come up behind us, but he didn't want to buy. So we'll just keep slow trolling around here until we find another one. Now there's a lot of flying fish around here. I can't get over it. We've already counted over 20 flying fish. We've only been fishing about 15 minutes. We just hooked the sailfish here. It came up and hit our big trolling feather and wouldn't swallow it. He's just slapping at it. And the deck camp slid back a live bait and he sucked it right up. For sailfish, he's not jumping too much. There you go. Oh! There you go. Oh! Marlin, blue marlin. Blue marlin. Woo! Ho! 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 Marlin azul. Yeah, look at that guy go. <laughs> I think he found out he's hooked. It doesn't look like a sailfish now, Maestro. ¿Qué pasó? He's just running and running. Nothing I can do, just hold on. He's trying to catch up to him. He's just taking all kinds of lines. Hey, I don't think it's a sailfish no more. ¿Qué pasó? <laughs> Oh, he's way out there jumping. That's really unusual. Usually a blue marlin will eat a big lure like that that we were trolling, and this one wouldn't do it. He was just slapping at it and slapping at it. He bit at it about four times. Dead camp slid back that light bait and sucked it right up. For a blue marlin, it's a little unusual. Whew. Marlin Azul. So, so Marlin Azul. <laughs> no, that's the sailfish. I'd rather catch a small blue marlin than a big sailfish. That blue marlin took off. Jump. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and release this fish once we get it out. I'm happy it's a marlin, not a sailfish. There he is. Right up on surface. Come on, baby, just let me land you. Right there, there he is, right there. Not a big marlin, but it's a blue marlin. These fish should get up to a thousand pounds. Bigger in some areas. There he is, right there. Come up here. Oh! Ah! Oh! Come on, baby. Come on back here. We're gonna let you go. Come on back. Uh, doesn't believe me. I'm just basically standing up here, wind down every chance I get. And then when the fish makes those really long runs, we've had this fish make a couple of runs that were 300 yards or so long, maybe 400 yards long, where he just took off, went flying, came out of the water. Then the skipper would just kick up the boat gear and go chase it. And it's not so much the 
give us a big advantage on uh, getting close to fish, but all it is is to keep the line on the reel. And you're not going to get the fish in until the fish is ready to come in. It's tired. We got a 4 out here. We really don't have a lot of line on there. About 40 pounds. So you can't, you can't just stay stationary and let them run like that. He's coming in closer now. Marlin a fool. Come on up. There it is, right there. Look at that dark shadow. So it got the boat, to, this is the leader right here. Right there is leader. There she is. There we go. Got her leader. I'm going to keep it. There she goes. Just let her go. Just got away there. Whew! That was fun. It's about 200 pound blue marlin. We got it right here to the boat. And the deck hand just reached down and cut the line out. We want to hurt it. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's see if we can get another one. That was fun. Well, welcome back. Well, after landing that fish, the wind and the swell really picked up, and we decided to call it a day. We still had another day of fishing to go, and there was no reason to be out here and take a beating. So we decided to head in. At Palmas de Cortez, it seems like all you ever do is fish and eat. Well, with the fishing all done, it's time to eat. Tonight's Mexican night, and it's a buffet night. And after spending a long, hot day out on the water, it'll be nice to eat outdoors. Well, the morning of the second day finds us back out on the water. It's a quick stop at the bait boat, and then it's off to the fishing grounds. Today I'm fishing with a longtime friend and one of the best skippers in the East Cape, and all of Mexico for that matter, is Mario. He runs a fresh catch, and today we'll be looking for more marlin. Now we got a big striper on live bait, and all we're trying to do now Get in front of him. He took off. He ran about 400 bring yards. Him in, bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. He's coming his way. He's coming right under the boat. He's the boat. There he goes. Coming out. There he goes. He's gonna jump. He's gonna jump. Taking a lot of light. Oh, he's way out there. About 200 yards out. I gotta make back a lot of line here. There he is. Oh! Coming back this way. Thinking about jumping. There he is. Yeah! Woo! Coming up. Okay, that guy's gonna grab the leader here. There we go. There we go. And keep it free spool. Oh, right, we got him now. Oh, and he's right there on the bill. All right, they barely hooked. We got lucky. We got very lucky. Let me catch him there. There he goes. Swims away. Woo! <laughs> uh, thank you, Mario. Woo! That was great. 
still excited for that fish. But before we move on, let me show you real quick what we're using. We have a Pan 45 GLS. A lot of people don't like to use these reels because of lever drags. But for Baja, I really like to use them. For rooster fish, slow trolling, trolling live baits, in a situation like that where we had the fish come up behind us, we dropped the bait on them. You can play with the drag, get that right tension, and then put it in full gear, set the hook. You can't do that with a regular star drag. And the rod, this is a Calstar rod, but it's a custom rod. It was made for me by Yo's Tackle. And uh, Leon Todd makes the blanks here at Calstar. It's a 610, but what's unique about it is every guide is a large guide. And the reason for that is here we have a knot so splicing the two lines together, our 40 pound main line, 125 pound leader. But we could put a big swivel in there if we wanted to. And because of these large guides, you could grind the swivel all the way to the reel. And you can see here we had to line, we had to wind the big knot about halfway through the rod. And that's what it was. And then we had a large live bait hook. This is a mustad hook, the size 80, and that's all it was. And we were real lucky that the fish had actually wrapped the line one time around his bill and the hook was just in his bill, it wasn't in his mouth, just up in the bill. But Dick Ann did a great job. Thank you very much. Mario, thank you. Get over here. Like last year. Okay. Last year. This is Mario our skipper. He got me two blues last year. And we got one uh, striper now. Let's go find this one. Marlon Oswald, sailfish, yeah. something. All right, stay tuned and we'll be right back with more action aboard the Fresh Catch and out of Palmas de Cortez. Woo! Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And make sure you join us next week when we show you part two of our East Cape adventure. I'd like to thank everybody at Aero California for helping to make this week's show possible. Oh, that's right there on the hill. All right, you can barely hook it. We got lucky. Yeah, very lucky. There he goes. Son of the West.